say it is the will of God that you and I continue uh, to share, to reach out. Uh, don't stay at home. Don't just come to church. But when we are out there, we are to be the light and the salt. So in the world, a lot of people go through a lot of things in their lives. Not just you and me. Huh? Sometimes we are so caught up with you and me. You know, but there are people out there, they really went through. And you need to pray that God will give you the answer. The right word, the right way to approach them. And Jesus will touch them. Not you, huh? not you or not me. We cannot do anything. So this is what I pray. Like, Lord, flow through me and touch this broken hearted people that need to be, you know, comforted, be set free. You know, the happening right now in Israel is the last day, the sign of time. But it shows you and I, Jesus is coming back. These are the signs of time. Suddenly, the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Not the doing of man. You might say, oh, you know, this not. Of course, people all over the world now is over this war, senseless, babies are dying. Yes. But at the end of it all, Jesus Christ said, these are the signs of the end time. So we need to keep reaching out. That's our mission. Just reach out. There are a lot of people out there they need to hear from you and me. We have the word of life. Can you say amen? I want you to stand and this morning after being uh, refreshed, the worship and looking at every one of you, you are not of the ancient of time, neither do I, but we have come again to ask God Empower me, what I can be, Lord, this one life that I have, I want to offer it as a living sacrifice. Book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we are very familiar with this promise, but you shall receive, everyone say, I shall receive. Say it again, I shall receive. Now, this time you need to say it. You really receive, don't you? I shall receive. This is Sunday morning. I know you are tired. You still, you know, your half of your spirit is in bed. But I want you to say it, you know, with the strength. I shall receive. Oh, hallelujah. All right. Now you are awake. So, Acts 1, 8 say, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be. Everyone say, I shall be. Now, say it as you are going to be. Believing, I shall be. All right. Praise God. I'm trying to get this across, the word of the Lord into your spirit. You shall be witnesses unto Jesus Christ, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in all Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And... Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. I'm going to read it in the Amplified version because it amplifies out very detailed. If you have a King James version, you can stay with that, but I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 to verse 20. May he, that is Jesus, 
grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit. God himself indwelling in your innermost being and personality. The next verse, may Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in the love and founded securely on love. Next verse, that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's people, the experience of that love. What is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth of it? Next verse, that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge that is without experience that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God that you may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Final verse. To him who in the consequence of the action of his power that is at work within you is able to carry out his purpose and to do super abundantly far over, above all, that you dare to ask or think indefinitely beyond your highest prayers, desires, your thoughts, your hopes, or your dreams. This is what Paul summed it up. After you receive the Holy Ghost, what is going to be of you, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? And I'm here to deliver to you this morning. And that is receiving power and blessings. Receiving power and blessings. This morning, I want you to know the Word of God, the love of God surpass all understanding. I cannot describe to you, I cannot even explain to you in human words about the love of God. We read in the Bible that God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. But I'm here to tell you today, God wants you to experience His divine love. And that is specially for you. And the power that comes with the divine love. You need to experience it. It's good to know about it. It's good to hear about it. It is good to read about it. But it is another level if you experience the love of God. Can you say amen? And so you will be surprised by how it can work out things beyond your under human understanding in your life. Today as I look back, and so are many of you, as you look back, you are amazed. How did I arrive here? It is because of Jesus. It is because of God's divine love for you. It is not because you are so smart, you are so talented, and how you make life and arrive here. No, 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 no. I always say to my wife, my family, my children, I say, what I am, who I am, how I become is because of Jesus. And that's what we should say. Not how I plan it out, how I work it out, uh, my human mind, how I execute it. 
I'm sorry for you. People who does that, God doesn't get the glory and God just let them go. They are on their own. I always have this confidence. If Jesus Christ is with me, who can be against me? You've got to have Jesus Christ behind you, backing you up all the way in your life. And I dare to say this, and I pray that you dare to say this, Jesus Christ is behind me. And I always set my eyes upon the Lord going forward. So in Ephesians, this is where Paul say that God wants to grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory. You and I, we cannot comprehend the great I am, the God that created the universe. And in all of his majesty and glory, he wants to grant to you today. But are you able to comprehend that? Mm -mm. But indeed, God wants you to be strengthened, reinforced with that power. Today, God has given you the assurance. The Holy Ghost is your assurance. Being born not of man, but born of God. And every one of you here that has been born again of the Spirit, you have that confidence. I've been born again of the Spirit of God. I'm no more fleshly from this earth. Right now, I'm on another level. I'm spiritual. That's why when I mix with people, of course, it's not self-righteousness. It is not saying I'm better than you. But when they try to justify and step on you, I will say, I have this confidence. I have Jesus. I refuse to bow down to their standard or level. God wants you to have confidence in your testimony. Because some of us, we don't have the confidence. How are we going to win them to the Lord? We go, yes, uh, uh, you know me, those days are uh, Yalla, I, I, you are going back to the buried old man. That's the buried old man. No more. That person, as far as Jesus Christ is concerned, is wiped off. You are now a new creation. You are new in Jesus Christ. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And this is where Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 gives us a beautiful way to live. Again, I will read it in the Amplified Version. 12 verses. Matthew chapter 5. Let me just go to the Amplified Version. Okay. And we will read in verse 3. Okay? He said, blessed. You see, you, you want to receive power and blessings. Right? And so you can. You have the Holy Ghost. In your life, you want power with God and power with men. But also, you want God's blessing in your life. And this is what Jesus said if you want blessing for your life. Blessed, happy, to be envy, spiritually prosperous, with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of the outward conditions of the poor in spirit. The humble who rate themselves insignificant, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So what Jesus Christ is advocating 
Don't be proud. Be humble. Put on the mind like Jesus Christ. Don't be arrogant. Don't think you're significant. Just say, I want to humble myself. Humble myself before God and humble myself before men. This is the key to your greatness. This is your key to your blessing. You want to be blessed? Be humble. You want your boss to increase your salary? Be humble. Don't be arrogant. Don't say, boss, that's not my job. Yeah, I, I have heard people like that. When the boss say, can you go photostate this pile of uh, uh, notes? Boss, I'm the executive. That's not my job. Go ask the clerk to do it. Ooh, you are so proud. You are so stuck up. You think you're so significant. You need to say, yes, boss. Because you are the boss. I'm the employee. I will do it. Don't care even if you are the general manager. He's the boss. He's the CEO or CFO or COO or OOO. Whatever. I don't know this type of title. But he's the boss. You might be the general manager. He said, go photo state this pile of Notes, you do it, man. And to those of us who humble ourselves, we know. We get increment. Yeah, I got increment. Not one time. And this is where Jesus advocated to you and to me have this humility, humbleness. You are blessed. Now, do you want the blessing of God? <laughs> Don't know, la, Pastor. Uh, go and pray, la. <laughs> the fasting and praying, you go and pray. So, blessed, happy. If you, uh, the Bible say, humble yourself. That means you don't even have second thought. You know, you are the general manager. You are so-so. You know, that's why people with position, sometimes the position can be a curse. It's not a blessing. They put themselves, you know, I have known a couple of people who achieve, all right? Whether material well, whether tansiri dato and all. I think they're miserable. They shouldn't have get those kind of position or uh, uh, accumulate those kind of, because suddenly they become isolated. They become lonely. Because why? They have to keep up with the status. Yeah, they keep up with the status. They don't want the people to know them. But when they have nothing, you can they tarry with them and pat them on the back and laugh and all, but you dare not go and pat one guy who is Tansiri or Dato. Hey, you are, uh, you die, uh, you do that. I, I, I challenge you to do that. You know, you dare not. Your friend suddenly now he's a Tansiri and you say, hey, Tansiri, yeah, yeah. The floor will look at you like, do that again. You see what is this? Ah. Tansiri, some got gun one and don't play the fool. So that's the, that's the case, okay? And then Jesus went on to say, was for blessed, enviable, or enviably, happy, with the happiness produced by the experience of God's favor, especially conditioned by the revelation of His matchless grace are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. It's talking about uh, when you serve God, when you are going through, the Bible say, you do not put on a sour face. That's not a good testimony. Nobody likes when you are serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and then you go around, and then they say, what happened to you? Who is your God? <laughs> Jesus, Lord. <laughs> why, why are you mourning? Oh, God, oh, painful serving God, you know. Cannot do this, cannot do that. And uh, uh, three-day fasting, I uh, cannot eat sabo. And then the sister Hawaii, every day pray, 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 pray. So much you work. <laughs> You're mourning. 
instead of serving God with gladness, enter into his court with praise. This morning you come, like after the, the few days of fasting, you're going to die. I was telling my children, they escaped because at that time they were young. When I came back to Malaysia, my pastor did a 50 days fast. But of course, he take liquid. This is Malaysia. 50 days. He stayed with me for one month, and I saw he lost one man. He's 400 pounds. By the end of the 50 days, he's only 200 pounds. 200 pounds disappeared already. I saw it. I witnessed it. And I said, Pastor, if I do like you, I disappear from planet Earth. Because I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm only 100 some plus pounds, and if I fast like you, nothing left of me. Sinew and skin and the bones there. He said, you are right, you cannot. Because he has that spare tank uh, to burn off. So I said, okay. But I want to be like you. I want to have the desire, Pastor. He said, do the one week one. So I called the church. This is back in the 80s, even 90s. I said, church, every beginning of the year and every middle of the year and ending of the year, seven day fast, no makan. Everybody like suddenly their eyes got big. And then they, after church, they came and said, Pastor, I will die. Lah. I say, yes, you will die in the flesh. But you will be alive in the spirit. Some of them follow, some they try. And I remember one accountant, young man, chubby guy. He said, I'm going to try. He's a new convert. He followed me. First day, second day, you know, third day. Fourth day, fifth day, it's crawling. Sixth day, oh, is Jesus coming back? And then on Sunday, after church, we have porridge, you know, and we break fast. But let me tell you, suddenly, the spirit becomes stronger. The flesh got disciplined, humbling, dire. So that was those days. So you guys escape. Today, pastor, too old or not too old. Uh, here I go again. Pastor, do not push the seven day because the foundation has been laid. You don't keep building foundation, okay? Have you seen any contractor, they build a house, they keep, then you still, hey, foundation. 20 years, foundation. 30 years, foundation. And then there's no building because they keep working on the foundation. That's ridiculous. You build on the foundation. Once the foundation done, you build the next level. Once the next level done, you keep building. That's how recently we have 118, the Agung Wen. How many years did it take to build the 118 building? Maybe five years, maybe six years. And so this is so important that today when you serve God, Jesus say you are blessed because happiness produced by the experience of God's favor. You might feel serving God, you are suffering. You have been trial and tested. Same thing with gold. But when the pure gold comes out, it's glorious. It shines. It is gold not diluted with other, you can say, minerals. Verse 5 say, happy or blessed, happy, joyous, spiritually prosperous, with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of the outward condition, are the meek, the mild, the patient, the long-suffering, for they shall inherit the earth. You know who's the meekest man on earth? It's Moses. And Moses, under the anointing of God, say, Moses is the meekest man on earth. That means to say, Moses do not have a temper. Huh? Moses broke the Ten Commandments. I know you say, hey, what's the wrong la? Moses broke the Ten Commandments because of his anger. But the word of God say, Moses is the Meekest man. That means Moses in his life, he never, he was revived. 
when Miriam, when Aaron, when the people, you know, want to pass judgment on him, criticize him, because he married, he took a wife out of Ethiopia, a dark, you know, skin, a lady. They didn't like it. They are Jewish. Moses did not say anything. Keep quiet. That's why Moses is permitted. And when you and I, we serve God, there are times we have to shut up. We have to smile. Yes. We got to put on meekness. You have to. There are times you have to put on meekness. With your family member, don't argue with them. Silent is golden. Do you know that? They say silent is golden. So when you and your spouse arguing, how many here you don't argue with your spouse? You put up your hand, we'll stone you. Uh, we won't stone you. Like. <laughs> okay? Suddenly you argue. The wife, and we see who can raise the voice louder and higher. Yeah, the higher speech. It's wrong. When I argue with my wife, she go higher, I go higher. No. I, Silent is golden. So you keep quiet. When you don't add oil to the fuel, uh, fuel to the fire, there's no fire. It will burn out. That's logic. That's common. And that's why we need to be meek. Blessed are the, You receive blessing from God. Every day in our life, when your boss shoots at you or when whatever comes on you, put on meekness. You got to put on meekness. All right? Okay. And then verse 6 says, blessed and fortunate and happy. Spiritually prosperous. See, he keeps saying spiritual. Because you know why? To your spirit and my spirit, we need to be without blemish. The flesh can go through, but the spirit should not go through. Because the spirit, your spirit and God's spirit, they are one. And you don't want to grieve the Spirit of God. You don't want to do that. The Bible says, if you commit a sin, you have an advocate with God. You don't want to grieve the Spirit of God and that's why you repent. You say, God, I'm sorry. I lost my temper, God. God, I did not want to say that, but I say some very harsh word. Forgive me. And this is where you will be blessed if you have patience and long-suffering. And then it says here, the state which born again child of God enjoy the favor and the salvation are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. That means to say, you live uprightness. Uprightness and right standing with God. You shall completely be satisfied. You are blessed. God wants you to have the thirst. That means the desire, righteousness, to have a right standing with God. You don't want to fail that. Why? You want to receive the blessing from God. Amen. And God wants you to be upright in this evil and wicked world. And then verse 7 says, Blessed. Or happy again to be envy. You know, when God bless you, there will be people around you, even your loved one, they will be envious of you. You know it. You should not be proud, but they say, Oh, you are blessed. You know, my mother, of course, she died in 2005. It took me, my wife, 15 years to be a witness to my mother. And my mother, very observant. She won't say much. She'll just come look at you. She observe, And she observed my life. And this is what my mother has to say. You truly know Jesus. And I can see Jesus has blessed you. My mother said that. And there are times when I, you know, needed something and all. You know what my mother would tell me? Oh, 
no problem, your Jesus will answer you. My mother, because she observed how I live. You know, one, uh, during the seven-day fast, my wife and I, we went back. She felt, I mean, she's a Buddhist. She do vegetarian fast. They just eat vegetarian, all right? She was shocked that I do three times a year, seven-day fast. She, you know, her, of course, a motherly love. She said, oh, uh, you cannot eat. Uh, uh, but I got soup. You, you don't take the, the meat. Uh, you just take the soup. And she will bring me a bowl of soup. You know, very nice soup. Lah. That time hungry, yeah. I can drink, lah. I cannot eat. The flesh, you know. So I say, yeah, yeah, okay, thank you, mother. Thank you. <laughs> but still hungry. Because the, the, the water cannot satisfy the, the, the hunger, you know. Still hungry. And then after that, next time don't give me soup anymore. Make me more hungry. <laughs> All right. So these are the things you go through. All right. And then verse 9 says, Blessed, enjoying, and vivable happiness, spiritually prosperous, with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of the outward condition, are the makers and the maintainers of peace, for they shall be called the sons of God. You that are born again of God's Spirit. Paul said what? In your living here on this earth, live peaceably. That means don't go and cause trouble to the government, to the church, to your family, even to yourself. Be at peace. Always uphold in my life, living for God, peace is the thing that I look for. Live peaceably with all men. And that's what we need to do. We have been called to live peaceably. And the Bible say, Jesus say, you will be blessed. Okay? Then final verse say, blessed and happy and enviably fortunate, spiritually prosperous, again to someone born again, who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for being and doing right. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you're doing right, you have been persecuted. You know, when I was doing right, my boss fired me. I mean, there are people in the world, they say, you're fired because they didn't like your witness, it convicted them, and so they can't take it. They say, one boss told me, there cannot be two lions in the den. So he's referring, he's a lion, I'm a lion. No, I'm not a lion. I'm the sacrifice lamb. So they say, he's the boss. He's got the right. And I say, sir, you are the boss. Give me the letter. And he gave me the letter. But he never paid me my salary, 2800 And I have to get Brother Sam, who was the labor officer. I said, Brother Sam, this guy, he fired me already. He still owed me 2800 ringgit. And this is back in 1986. That's a lot of money. That's like three, four months salary. Brother Sam went, talked to that guy, gave him a warning. He was the labor officer. And the guy still don't want to pay. And finally, the court the uh, tribunal court sent a letter to him. And then he came. And then, uh, sometimes the people in the world are so bad. So bad. And he said, can I give a post the check? Uh? Can you believe that? He still don't want to give me my money and he wants to post data it. And then the tribunal judge said, how long are you going to post data it? At first he wanted like a few months, you know. No, 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 no. Maximum two weeks. So he stretched it to two weeks. Lah. That also is shocked. Two weeks or not, I still get the money. So I took the check two weeks later, quickly go to the bank early morning when the bank door opened, bang it in, get my money. Once the money on hand, ah, side of relief. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Okay? So this is where you don't go and 
go out of the way, to throw Molotov cocktail on his house and burn down his car and his house. <laughs> you don't do that, okay? You hold your peace. You do it the right way. And then it will stand blessed and happy, fortunate, spiritually prosperous. And the Bible say, are those who are persec- oh, no, sorry, <laughs> verse 11, blessed or happy, prosperous, blah, blah, blah. When people revive you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account. Don't expect. You know, when, 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 I, when I got married and uh, my wife and then I met some of the relatives and all, of course, you know, they have never come across Christian in the relative circle. So they start making fun. You know, they say uh, Jesus got lambs, got sheep, but Jesus also got a monkey like you. You know, they, they say that. And I'm like, uh, okay, very funny, eh? And then every time they see me, they go, hallelujah. They, it's mockery, you know, in the mockery, I just keep, I was kind of like quiet. I wouldn't retaliate. And they make all kinds of comments. But today they look at me, they, <laughs> they know they were wrong. Because God takes the last laugh. Yeah, today they dare not. They look at me like, oh, hello, pastor. They call me pastor. I'm not even their pastor, but they call me pastor. I don't know. All right. And then it says here, final words in verse 12, be glad and supremely joyful. For your reward in heaven is great, strong and intense. For in this same way, people persecuted the prophets who were before you. And he went on to say, you are the salt, you are the light. So what Jesus is trying to advocate, this is the other way around. This is how you and I, as born again of the Spirit, should live. We will receive power. We will receive blessing. Amen. Can you say amen? And then, after that, the teaching from the Lord Jesus Christ about humbleness, repent and be sorry, non ego, this uh, ego, this this girl, spiritual hunger, show mercy and be merciful, be pure in your faith, be a peacemaker. Accept trials and persecution. Accept your suffering for Jesus. Learning to rejoice always. So Jesus seems to be telling us that receiving the blessing isn't really about getting, but about you are in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says what? When you are in Christ Jesus, it's the hope glory. It's the hope of glory. We are blessed when we are like Him. You are blessed when you are like Jesus. And that's where Paul mentioned how you can receive blessing in your life. And it doesn't come, oh, I go to church on Sunday. You know, a lot of Christians do that. When I was, uh, the past week, reaching out to these, these people, uh, there is a couple, and of course I didn't condemn them. They, they, they don't have grounding. They are Christian. They even mention who is their pastor. Few times, they are having, the wife ha- having a, a tiger beer, and the husband is having tiger, Christian, you know, tiger beer. And uh, Brother Super, that guy keep coming and saying, Pastor, tiger beer, come la. It's tiger beer only. I say, what tiger? We got Lion of Judah, la. what tiger? And he, and of course, the others who are not Christian, they are looking at, here is a pastor, here is a Christian. Huh? Don't know what church, la, but Christian. And they are observing, and especially the, the smart guy, you know, the one who is very quiet, you know, he's, he's looking. I say, sir, I do not drink beer or any alcohol, period. Finally, he got the message. Oh, but 
there goes his witness. Because the people start mocking Christian who is not grounded in the word of the law. Because the Bible say, no drunkard shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's why we have to be very careful what we say, what we do. Because the people are looking, do you have the power of God? Do you have the blessing of God in your life? And God cannot be mocked. So by our living, by our testimony, we cannot mock God. Either He's the great I am, or He's not. Can you say amen? And so when you pursue the Word of God, and you find the sufficiency in Jesus Christ, you will realize the depth of God's blessing. And this is what the morning teaching and all that is challenging you. You need to pursue, not just knowledge. You need to pursue to go deeper, to identify with Jesus Christ. What is yours become His. What is His become yours. And that's why Jesus said, ask whatsoever you will. Because now you are connected in strong bond of relationship. And Jesus will not have second thought. Jesus will say, here is a man, here is a woman after my heart. Because it's already connected. And not, Lord, Lord, who are you? Because you are out of connection. Right? I've seen people go to hotel, you know, they use even latest iPhone or whatever. And sometimes hotel, I don't know, they have some kind of gadget or what, and then they take their phone and then they, and then they run here, run there. There's no bar, not single bar. Very frustrating, isn't it? Christians are like that. If you are not connected with Jesus Christ, you will take that. You are trying to find a connection. Yeah. And so stay connected. So get to know who is your God. Because when you know who is your God, you know what you're going to do? You're going to do exploit. You are going to be successful. You will be blessed. You will have power. Amen. You are His witnesses. You must bear the truth. And you don't want to bear the truth in vain. Okay, 1 Peter chapter 4. This is what Peter tells us. In 1 Peter chapter 4, in verse 15. He says here, But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as Busy body in others' men's matter. So, Peter say what? You can say, I'm not a murderer. La. I'm not a thief, la, pastor. I'm not even an evildoer. But I'm a busy body. That's it. It's mentioned here. Huh? Murderer, of course, no one. La. Thief, no one. La. Evildoer, no one. La. But busy body... Uh, uh, sometime, sometime, we need to quit being busybody in other men's matter. It's mentioned here in the Bible. Can I hear an amen? Uh, better say amen, no? Because it hurts. A lot of times they murder all this, you know, very highlighted one. But busybody, no la. It's, God is not concerned on that la. Kepochi, ah, kepochi, you know, kepochi. Like to stick your finger in everybody's business. The Bible mentioned here. Peter said that. You know why Peter said that? Because he's one of them. Yeah. You know what Peter asked? What will be of him? Ah? Yeah, kepochi. Jesus, ah, this one, ah, this disciple, what will be of him? Jesus said, shut up, ah, my own business. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> So that's why Peter wrote this text because he knew. All right? And so we are to be 
like Christ, his character. That's why Jesus gave us the beatitudes. Everything that a born-again Christian should be. Amen. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, because there are times, because God don't want us to be disobedient, rebellious in our spirit, in our living, whether in this world or in His kingdom. Right? Not in church. God don't want you to be rebellious in church. As much as out there or at home. This is not in the beatitudes. The beatitude is you need to be at peace. And then in Acts chapter 5 verse 29, this is where the apostle mentioned. Not that they rebel, is that they don't agree. Because here in chapter 5, verse 29, okay, men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, and he is both dead and buried, and, uh, wait, I think I got the wrong still, chapter 5. Oh. Ah. Okay, chapter 5, verse 29. He says, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So what is Peter is saying is that anything that go against God's truth and commandments, then if you know that, you can say, I will obey God and not men. Yeah. A pastor say, okay, everyone can drink. After church, go get a beer. Will you obey, pastor? And there you go. You're smart, intelligent, you're spiritual. Because you say, I would rather obey God because God said, no drunkard shall enter the kingdom of God. I won't obey, pastor. You're right. You should not obey me. Okay? Or pastor say, okay, we're going to have a tontin, or they call it a toto thing. Everybody chip in 100 ringgit, and then we play this. What do you call it? Uh, there's a name for it. Kutu. Uh, kutu. Kutu mayam. Okay, kutu. <laughs> you can say, no, pastor, because the Bible tell God say, thou shalt not defraud thy brother by playing kutu. After you become kutu also. You cannot. So he said, we rather obey God than obey pastor. You are right. It's not rebellion. It's not you are going against the pastor. Because the pastor is saying something contrary in the word of God. You, you got the right to say, I will obey God than obey pastor. Because the pastor is asking us to play kutu, you know. After all of us become kutu. So cannot. Alright? So this is where we need to live a blessed life. Receiving power and blessing when we realize the abundance of God's grace. That means God's unmerited favor. Today, God wants to give you His favor. Tell your neighbor, God wants to give you His favor. You better want it. You don't say, I never mind, la. it's okay. La. You need it. You need God's favor. Many of us, we experience that. We receive favor. Yeah. This church receives favor. And so, we must live victoriously. You and I, we got to live today, especially in this last day, a victorious life. Not defeated. Not poor. Not very miserable. <coughs> we need to live victoriously. Because the people out there in the world, your, your relatives, your friends, they want to see that you're serving Jesus Christ in victory, not in defeat. In closing, Hebrews chapter 12, let's all stand. I call this the three R or the four R's. Hebrews chapter 12, Verse 1, 
in order to receive power, in order to receive grace or the blessing of God in the days of adversity. I don't know where you stand, what you are going through, but this is the days of adversity. This is a day of running with the horses. This is no more the relaxing, just a walk with Jesus. Because the walking with the footmen, the days are over. Today, we are leaving days of adversity. That means you run with the horses. Can you imagine running with the horses? You find it so tiring, hard to keep up because horses can run. And you and I, the Bible says, you've got to run with horses. So you need to remember in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, the four R's. You know what's the four R's? This is where Paul said, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Number one R, be reminded. Remember, we are compassed with a great cloud of witnesses. You are not alone. There's many witnesses all over the world for Jesus. Remember, be reminded. This is where you have to tell yourself today, if I were to re live in the power of God, if I were to live in receiving His grace and blessing, I have to remember. And then He say what? The second R is to remove. You know what to remove in your life today? Lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. Anything that is a weight, a burden. Jesus said what? I have preached and teach many times. Press it to Jesus. Don't try to carry it yourself. Let it go. Lay aside. Remove. Every way. And if the sin is beating you down, and you have the habit of, I need that, I need that. Mm. It's sin. Or you go, give, give, give me a shot. <laughs> so good. So high. That's sin. Or you go to Ampat Eko there, you're lining up. Vanity, you know. I want to be like uh, Robert Quark. When can I hit that million dollar jackpot? Huh? And then you buy that number. The weight and the scene that so beset you. Or you go to Bukit Bintang area and then you see all these neon lights and mm, my wife don't know lah. Okay. Indonesia this one, Vietnam, China mm. the sin that's so you know, pastor is trying to wake up what the Bible is saying adversity the sin is trying to draw you it's trying to draw you and on and on and on Remove it. Remove it. You got no place to be in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's why God told Abraham, get thee out of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm going to destroy it by fire. In this world, there are places Christians should not be in. We should stay out of it. The third one, Resolve. Make up your mind, please. Make up your mind. Don't be double-minded. 
if you live for Jesus, if you serve Jesus, then like Joshua, as for me and my family and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Run the race. Resolve. Make up your mind. Don't be double-minded. You will receive power. You will receive blessing. You will not be half-hearted. That's why we preach, we teach, is to inspire you, is to spur you on. Let us run the race. Don't say, uh, I'm tired, la. cannot. Uh, uh, can I sit down and rest a while? You don't do that. We carry you up. Let's keep running. Amen. Fourth and the last one. And he says here, rely on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. You've got to look, rely on Jesus. Anything that you do, whatever you're going through, always remember, I will lift up my head and look to Jesus from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. You want power? You want blessing? You got to remember Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Remind yourself, remove the weight and the sin beset you. Make up your mind, resolve to run with patience the race and always rely on Jesus. The four hours, you will do well. Let us pray right now. Jesus, musician to come. I pray that this morning you will know this is the day of adversity. Jesus said, do not care what you're going to eat, you're going to put on, what you're going to have, what you don't have, because he is the author and the finisher the day that you look to him. What he has begun, he's going to finish it. But the thing is that you, it is you. Everyone say, I. It is you, it is me. How we are going to go about it. So important. Sometimes we are so caught up in adversity that we lost knowledge. A word that surpasses your knowledge, surpasses all understanding. And that is, you can be complete in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is all in all for you. Mm -hmm.